Welcome back to Capital Journal here at the Grand Hotel. We're at the Business Council of Alabama's annual Governmental Affairs Conference. I'm joined by U.S. Senator Katie Britt. Senator, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to be on, be in front of your audience. Well, this is interesting because we're here at BCA. You were the former <laughs> that's right. CEO or president CEO of the Business Council of that's Alabama. Right. That was your job before you ran for Senate. So that's, that's kind of interesting. And now you're speaking as a panelist from the you know from the, the, our federal delegation what's that like yeah so obviously having put on one of these conferences there are there's so much work that goes into it i mean so many people making sure that everything lines up and that you've got good material to put in front of people good panels engaging opportunities and so um, to see today um, you know really appreciated the hard work that went into it and i know what it feels like when it's a success and i think this morning was certainly a success um, and a lot of people got a lot out of the different panels that that were on were on stage is it less stressful as a as a participant yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely you're not worried about okay is this going to work is that going to work is the timing of this where is that person uh, so it's nice to just be able to enjoy a cup of coffee enjoy the material in front of you and um, get to get to be here in that in that way and also take about a million selfies i saw the line <laughs> um one of the things y'all talked about was child care yes and the workforce development the workforce issue is kind of this watchword now mm -hmm. uh, a huge issue but you have legislation dealing with this from the federal level talk about child care how that impacts the issue of workforce and maybe a, as a barrier to the workforce absolutely so one of the things that i've tried to do since i uh, you know step foot on the senate floor is find things that i'm passionate about and that too that i you know uniquely have a window into i mean i am the only republican female with school age kids in the entire united states senate so whether it's speaking directly to the youth mental health crisis or looking at social media or even taking a look at what it's like you know to be a mom i, I kind of reflected on my own challenges trying to find child care both affordability and accessibility i knew that tim kane um, democrat from Virginia had been a real leader for this in his state when he was governor and did some bold things. And so one of the first conversations I had when I got to the Senate was sitting down with Tim and saying, I want us to find a pathway forward on this, a common sense solution where we can affect people um, and affect this in, in a positive way. So we're working together on that. Um, you referenced it when it comes to workforce shortages that we have. You know, we have them all across our state. When you look at the economic impact of the child care crisis, it's about $122 billion economic impact a year. You know, I look at it um, as a mom myself, and I think about when we had two small children and we were writing that check uh, for our childcare, it felt like we were writing a check for college. When you look at the fact that Alabama is a more rural state with 55 out of 67 of our counties being rural, trying to figure out the accessibility angle of this too um, is important. So we approached it in a way of saying, let's take a look at the child development uh, or the, the child and dependent care tax credits, um, decoupled those from what they have the decap and really tried to make it more accessible and more user, user friendly. Um, additionally, taking a look at as we expanded those things and try to incentivize employers to help in this area as well um, moving those tax credits up for businesses up from 150,000 this is the 45 F provision to $500,000 um, a year and then also allowing small businesses you know this from our conversations so a small business I believe is the heartbeat of America every one of our main streets all of our communities and so finding a way for small businesses to be able to participate so they can pull their resources up to 600,000 so we looked at that and then we also have a separate provision um, a separate piece of legislation that takes a look at um, how we can create um, and sustain an even greater child um, a workforce there for child care so it, it approaches it in multiple different ways um, it also allows those people that um, don't have a tax burden to actually get a refund check it's the first of its kind in that in that regard as well so we're excited about the comprehensive nature of it there'll be a lot of discussion moving forward particularly in the next Congress about you know tax cuts and all of those types of things and so Tim Kane and I wanted to make sure that we um, had this critical issue right in front of our colleagues so that we can help get some traction and hopefully do some good things I was gonna ask I mean it's, it's been introduced you did mm -hmm. the rollout 
but maybe not likely going to pass this year. Is this, right. this is looking at next year, next Congress? Absolutely. Okay. So it start to build momentum, and, and you remember from your time there, that's exactly what you have to do. Uh, figure out, you know, get people on board, and as we take a look um, at the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and, and what is expiring, there'll be a larger conversation okay. that occurs within both the Senate and the House. And so knowing that this is such a critical issue, and you think about, you know, if you want to have the opportunity to stay home with your children, and you do, I want you to have that opportunity. But if accessibility or affordability is an impediment to you re-entering the workforce, I, I want to take that off the table. This disproportionately affects women, um, and we want to make sure that we um, create strong communities, and to me that starts right here with a bill like this. Interesting, because you're, you mentioned working with Tim Kaine, mm -hmm. Democrat from uh, Virginia. It seems to be kind of like a tradition in the Senate that you know, you'll find an issue between Republicans and Democrats to, to work on together. Yeah. I think that that, that's significant in a time that's so polarized like we are in. Talk about why that's so important um, and why that's been a tradition in the U.S. Senate. Absolutely. So, I mean, Todd, thank you for giving me the chance to talk about it, too, because a lot of people, you know, just want to talk about some of the hot button issues. Red meat. <laughs> right. And not the things that we are doing where we're coming together, where when we share a common goal, I believe we have an obligation to the people we serve to get in a room and try to figure out a path forward. And on this, whether it's child care or whether it's the maternal mortality crisis and me getting in a room with Senator LaFonza Butler and saying, how can we fix this? We know that, you know, Alabama has one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the nation. It disproportionately affects black women. You know, this is 2024. It shouldn't be like this at this point. And so whether it's that or social media or whatnot, in the Senate, you have to get 60 votes to get something passed. And so finding a good partner, finding common ground, creating a bipartisan solution is essential to moving it forward. And truly, that's what our country is, felt, is founded on, is figuring out, you know, how do we move these things forward in a way that's productive for Americans? And citizens and so um, on the issues where I share a common goal with someone across the aisle I'll continue to get in a room and try to figure out a pathway forward and I think I have multiple examples of doing that already and um, certainly we'll do that so we can do good things for Alabama and the nation so that sounds really optimistic should we be more optimistic than we maybe might be <laughs> yeah. if we just pay attention to Twitter or just <laughs> yes, cable actually. news or whatever is it is it in the room when it's the United States Senate? Do y'all get to get along more than maybe meets the eye when it, we just, just watch Twitter or whatever? Yeah, and I think that, you know, and that's one thing that I try to talk very openly about, um, whether it's in hearings or um, in interviews like this, is, you know, partnerships that you create in order to do good things. And so I think you see a lot of that in the Senate, but unfortunately, that's not what gets people clicks. Hmm. Um, we're in a world where, you know, uh, some people in the media believe it's their job to sell the news versus tell the news. And so telling the news is maybe not as interesting as selling the news. And so I think I am gonna keep speaking directly into this and look, I'm gonna fight for our values and fight for our people. And on some of those things, I obviously disagree very strongly with people across the aisle. And, and I speak directly into those consistently as well. But where we share this common ground, where we can find consensus and actually move things forward. Um, we just passed COSA, it's a social media bill there in the Senate, knowing that you know we look at where our children are today, knowing that we've got to put up some guardrails to, to help them be able to succeed, uh, those things are important so we're gonna keep doing it you should be more hopeful there are certainly things where we don't share a common goal and um, and you see those consistently on Twitter but um, I, I do think where where we do Americans should be hopeful because there are good people in the room trying to find solutions to common problems that are whether that are really happening in people's everyday life um, or issues even that are happening in our communities. So Congresswoman Terry Sewell and I have worked together um, consistently to help Selma and other areas in the region, you know, whether it's flood risk um, mitigation and all types of things. So we are working together. I wish that story got told more because I think it would allow the American people to exhale and it would give them some hope about what's possible in the future um, the bridge the yes. bridge and Bayway I know it's not a direct appropriation it's, it's a grant and all that but I know you worked this um, take me behind the scenes we've okay. we've read the press releases we've seen the announcement we've seen yeah. the, the all the take me behind the scenes how does how does this happen in terms of getting the largest federal grant the state of Alabama has ever seen like this. $550 million to build the Mobile River Bridge and Bayway. Yeah, so I would say probably two things offhand. A lot of people doing a lot of things 
and then also never giving up. So if you rewind back to this, this has been a project I've been working on as a staffer uh, during my time at BCA and now obviously as a United States Senator. Consistently, you know, when people get turned down for opportunities, um, you, you kind of sort of see the momentum dissipate. On this one though, uh, the players kept coming back to the table. There was great collaboration between local, state, and federal leaders. And we kept asking questions. What was different about you know, their application than ours? What, what do we need to strengthen? How can we be better? And continued to keep applying and pushing forward and hoping for a different result. A lot of people don't have that level of tenacity. You have to give it to this community, the state, and our federal leaders for continuing to work that process. Um, you know, additionally, I would say um, in all of that, you know, building relationships within these different departments and different agencies to kind of have those conversations. You know, people have to want to help you and you've got to make sure that you put forth the best project. So we had, we had uh, moments of asking questions, moments of changing different things on there. Obviously, Governor Ivey did a tremendous job. Um, Aldot did a tremendous job. Um, you know, John Cooper worked this. You look down at the local level, Sandy Stimson has been working on this. I mean, tirelessly, obviously, both the MPO and Mobile and Baldwin County coming together to find a solution. You look at our federal leaders, I was proud to continue to lead the letters on this, continue to lead the effort on this, and really lean into that and the necessity of this. Um, you know, you cannot get from Texas to Florida without coming right through I-10. Mm -hmm. And so knowing what this meant, we've, we've been diligent about um, trying to be visionary. And I'm gonna keep doing that in the United States Senate. You saw Senator Shelby do it with the deepening and widening of the port. As that port has continued to grow, you know, 2017, it was named the fastest growing container port in the nation. Um, you know, obviously, and you also have people commuting back and forth. You also have those traveling to visit other others and come visit other places. There's a continual strain that's placed on this. So if we want to take full advantage of all that's in front of us, making sure that we were able to widen this uh, was just critically important to continued growth. So I'm excited for what it means for commerce. I'm excited for what it means, obviously, um, just for the local communities here. And then you also think in the unfortunate event of, of some type of natural disaster, the ability to move um, more quickly and safely across the space. So uh, this took a lot of diligence and a lot of people doing a lot of things. And I was honored to continue um, to push this project forward and, um, and be a member of the team. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for that. Um, we're going to come back to Mobile and talk about the bridge, talk about the, the port, talk about the deepening and widening of the dredging. Um, but look, I know you got to go. Thank you for your time and we'll see you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.